modern day politician Amish has ever spoken in such language, sought to set such expectations because once the Prime Minister takes the bar high, then he'll be judged against his own rhetoric. The last modern day politician I can think of who pitched for greatness, said these kind of things was say, um, Mahatma Gandhi, Mohandas Karamchand Gandhi who again said some stuff which seemed surreal at the moment, seemed to be sagely. Is the Prime Minister's message sagely and given that he is ultimately a real life politician who needs to do things here and now and some of them are transactional, some of them need to be done in the cut and the heat and the dust of an election, then what do you think he is looking to do? Well, he is almost looking to rise above the modern day uh, politics and speak to the ages, speak to time. I think uh, the answer again lies in uh, Lord Ram himself. Um, are there battles where Lord Ram had to fight and had to do what he had to do to win a battle? Of course. Uh, and that is uh, the exigencies of the short term. It depends on how you look at time. If you're looking at time only for a quarter or for five years, you think in a certain way. But if you look at time over a few centuries, you just think differently. That doesn't mean that uh, uh, you'll ignore the exigencies of, of the day. You have to fight the battles that you have to fight today. But if you have clarity on where you want to go, what the values are that you stand for as a civilization, um, then it certainly is, uh, you know, it guides, it ends up guiding the decisions that you take today. We are the only pre-Bronze Age culture that is still alive. A large part of that is we are not a nihilistic culture. We stand on the shoulders of uh, giants who are our ancestors and perhaps, uh, perhaps the message is that we should be worthy of those uh, giant ancestors uh, who uh, ensured that they were the only, that they managed to save the only ancient culture. All other ancient cultures, their ancestors, they surrendered. Our ancestors refused and we are, uh, we have lost a lot. There's no denying that. But much of our values are still alive. We okay. are at our core, plural, liberal, in its, in its true sense. Ashwin? Not uh, so, so. Swami Govind Dev Giri Maharaj spoke before the Prime Minister and he sought to compare the Prime Minister's actions with those of Chhatrapati Shivaji Maharaj. Explain to our audience why Chhatrapati Shivaji Maharaj, uh, given Chhatrapati Maharaj's life history, what does uh, the Swami suggest the Prime Minister is doing or ought to be doing or seeking to do? I think um, Rahul, uh, you know, we, we need to remember that we are a wounded civilization. Um, and I am never one of those who believes that, you know, every historical wrong has to be righted. But just please, for a moment, think about the term collective memory. You know, collective memory uh, in some ways refers to a shared pool of memories. So, for example, there is a generation of Jews who may not have lived through the Holocaust, but they carry collective memories uh, of their exile from Jerusalem, their captivity in Babylon, and even uh, the, the Holocaust. And the same collective memory applies to uh, Sanatan Dhar. And that is where I think in some ways, Chhatrapati Shivaji Maharaj was that healing balm, where he felt where he inspired an entire generation to believe that they could live to see another day. I mean, the assaults on our civilization, I don't need to take you to uh, uh, Somnath or Kashi or uh, Dwarka or Mathura, but uh, the truth of the matter is that, uh, that those blows have been very, very substantive. Uh, you can just simply visit the kuwait -e islam uh, Mosque uh, near the Qutub Minar, which proudly has a plaque which says that this was built using the parts from 27 uh, Hindu and Jain temples. So, and the collective memories are not only related to the destruction of temples, but many, many other actions, whether it was, I mean, I think if I'm not mistaken, uh, you know, uh, uh, the uh, Ferishta, the Persian historian, uh, uh, talks of instances where the Bahmani sultans set targets of one lakh infidel heads to roll. So this is a population that has been bruised many times. And I think Shivaji in that sense is symbolic of giving us hope that our civilization will not die out. 
that we will live to see another day the prime minister uh, said rahul may i rahul yeah. may i add something yeah. go, go what ashwin uh, said very rightly i think one of the, another way to look at it also is like i said every other ancient pagan idol worshiping culture was wiped out and in fact they were killed uh, from existence and if you actually study or all their uh, many of their histories i have read much on them there comes this phase where there's like the last fight right uh, so for the greco romans it was uh, julian the apostate emperor you know there was that last battle to somehow survive to keep the flame alive uh, and then you see how essentially they surrendered it happened with the zoroastrian persians in iran it happened with the greco romans pharaonic egyptians all right the reign of aurangzeb was actually it it we were close to being wiped out and uh, chhatrapati shivaji was essentially like an emperor julian who succeeded right uh, and i think what makes chhatrapati shivaji even more remarkable uh, is that uh, he fought ruthlessly with his enemies but there were lines he would not cross because he he i guess i mean he used to say that he is fighting according to the principles of dharma he used to tie his hands up with guidelines that his enemies did not have his primary enemies at that time were the temurids uh, aurangzeb and uh, the portuguese whose primary source of revenue was slavery uh, many indians modern indians don't know this the first modern ruler to ban slavery was not uh, abraham lincoln it was actually chhatrapati shivaji he banned uh, the trade of uh, slaves uh, in india because he said this is a dharma when his army used to go out uh, to battle uh, there were rules that worship places will not be touched women and children will not be touched of course he was ruthless but only with his enemies uh, with abzal khan or with anyone else but i love this immersion was, in history and culture and the kind of insights and that was critical rahul that yes. they will fight hard but there are lines that will of dharma that will not be crossed no matter who your enemy is